Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to Latvia's Kuģinēcība Investor Conference webinar about audited financial results of year 2016. Today we are hosted by the advisor of the chairman to the chairman of the management board, Dirts Apsītis, and financial director, Santos Pūla. Before I give the floor to our guests, a short reminder about the agenda of the webinar. Firstly, we will have a presentation about Latvijas Kuģinēcība activities and financials in year 2016. Afterwards, we will proceed with the questions and answers session. If you would like to use this unique opportunity to ask a question directly to the representatives of Latvijas Kuģinēcība, please use the question box on the right-hand side of your screen. All questions will be addressed after the presentation. Dear guests, I invite you to start the presentation. Good afternoon, all listeners. This is our first uh, webinar this year. And uh, me, my name is Santa, and me and my colleague Girtz, we will guide you through uh, all major activities uh, happened during 2016, as well as we will present latest market trends in shipping activities and the market uh, on the and also the situation on our on, our, on real estate uh, market regarding our Lasco investment on uh, real estate portfolio. Uh, we have published uh, annual annual report for 2016 on Monday, so you get uh, uh, you get a chance to introduce yourself with the annual report, and I will shortly uh, remind you and uh, explain how we were doing last year. So revenues last year was uh, reached uh, 100 million for the all LSC group activities and which was a slightly higher than the previous year when revenues was almost 93 million. The main reason was um, from, the, um, from the existing time charter uh, rates, which were mainly concluded during 2015, when the market was better. Accordingly, 3 million more is uh, earned this year. I'm saying this year, that meaning uh, 2016. The balance of the increase in revenues relates to activities to, in uh, other segments of Latvian shipping com uh, company group with um, activities in technical management company, which is owned by the group, as well as uh, rent income from groups, real estate segment. On a group's uh, EBITDA, we can say the trend of increasing, improving is uh, continuing uh, year to year. And also, the 2016 is a better uh, due to few reasons, which is uh, time charter rates achieved uh, sli slightly higher than last year, and the second main component, uh, which had an impact on EBITDA, is decrease in, uh, in administrative costs, which have decreased from 7.2 uh, million last year in 15 to almost 6 million this year. And the main reason, of course, is a decrease in legal expenses, as you can see from annual report, which is um, which has significantly reduced after the settlement concluded last year by the management in June 2015. Uh, in addition, also, uh, I would like to ha highlight that 25 companies from our, uh, from our group is, uh, has liquidated last year. Uh, 25 in foreign uh, jurisdictions, but this sold mainly, mainly those who were involved in, in um, litigations. And um, also administrative costs are reducing because of um, reorganization process, which has um, very active last year, as you can see. Also, Alaska Investment Group was uh, reorganized. Uh, reorganize, um, reorganization process was happened and performed in uh, 2016. We were incorporating those companies into one parent company. Unfortunately, the group uh, faced a loss last year, uh, reaching 25 million. The main impact was um, from decrease in fleet's value. 25 million mainly consists of um, attributable to 
revaluation loss, you have seen that we, uh, the management has changed the accounting principle on the valuation of the fleet to reflect the fair value uh, of our uh, existing fleet. Accordingly, the 24 million is recognized as revaluation loss and uh, also part of the decrease is caused by higher depreciation charge which um, which is um, ex accelerated also in 2016 to to represent more um, a prudent uh, view on our uh, fleet values the cash balance um, has decreased down to 48 million there is the main reason for the decrease is uh, in, in, a, in amount of 5 million is a partial prepayment of uh, we are calling it 360 million facilities the biggest one in our group in the amount of uh, 11 million we made it uh, we made it in uh, in order to efficiently use excess uh, of uh, liquidity held in uh, accounts of LSC holdings uh, ring financed by the financing banks As uh, asset values has decreased uh, significantly last year, the management adopted, um, as I said, a more conservative approach and we moved from the cost method to fair value method. So you can uh, see in our, the ba our balance sheet, the fleet will, uh, be, will be valued at the fair market. That means that we have ordered valuations at the year end and the independ independent broker has uh, set the value Yes, so it's reflected in the balance sheet uh, this year and also in we are planning to do uh, for the years. Uh, regarding the fleet financing, uh, last year uh, we have two big facilities. We are calling it uh, 48 million, which has um, which has been extended last uh, last summer. So financed fleet was consisted of two vessels, and now it's extended uh, for another two years until mid of uh, 2018, and the payment will uh, with the balloon payments at the at the end of uh, long term maturity. Another, the biggest, uh, the biggest facility, 360 million facility, uh, which was uh, raised for 14 new buildings in 2000, back in 2000, uh, 2004, was refinanced this year. So successfully, successfully uh, in February it finished and um, financing process was finished and by a three bank syndicate for another five and a half year. In uh, the refinance balance was uh, 121 million. The new loan is repayable according to the straight line amortization schedule uh, with no balloon payment at the end and final maturity will be in um, June 2022. I will pass the microphone now to my colleague Gertz and he will uh, tell uh, about the shipping market trends and the real estate as I mentioned in the be beginning of the presentation. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I will cover today commercial issues of the company for the last year and briefly introduce uh, our view for this year. First about the fleet. Uh, our commercial fleet was not changed last year and uh, we do not do, do not expect uh, changes this year. So it consists of um, 12 medium range tankers and four handy side vessels. But um, what we was able to expand last year is uh, fleet under technical management and um, currently beside our 16 own vessels, vessels um, we have additional seven third-party vessels already under technical management and we expect two more vessels to come uh, in April, May and uh, if everything will go well then 
till the end of the year, the amount of vessels under technical management will reach 30. Uh, besides that, uh, it gives and um, generates additional revenue for the company. It also shows uh, the competence of, of our company. As, uh, for example, last year, it was possibility for us to attract even more vessels, but uh, when uh, our inspectors checked them, we refused uh, because they were in such a bad condition that it could damage uh, our reputation. So, we are looking uh, to expand, but uh, doing it carefully. As you can see, uh, last year uh, was a good year in uh, respect of charter rates, but uh, as my colleague already explained, and um, as I will show you, as I will show you in the next slide, uh, the market uh, has weakened seriously uh, during uh, Q3 and Q4 last year. So, uh, we are back to the rates where it was, they were uh, some five years ago. So, for example, if we compare uh, time charter rate equivalents uh, last year, January, uh, to the current rates, so we can see that it's a dramatic change when one third of, of the rate, when yeah, it's 33rd percent approximately lower than last year. Uh, main reasons for such a dramatic decrease is that um, currently the spot market, the real market uh, where tankers operate is uh, considerably weaker and um, also other factors which influence is that uh, the World fleet he continues to increase, then uh, it means also less ton miles. So uh, we can explain that uh, ships travel shorter trips, and there's uh, more efficiency in, in oil logistics by oil importers. For example, in Nigeria. Uh, a couple of years ago, it was normal that the uh, ship was idle for uh, almost months. Now it can be reloaded within a couple of days. So it also improves um, demand side of the ships. Uh, one factor which already mentioned is uh, that new new vessels are coming into this market and uh, you can see that last year uh, the total world vessel fleet in MR segment uh, rose by 6.5 percent. It is expected that uh, th approximately the same uh, level of increase will be also this year and uh, what does it mean for uh, for the market? It means that uh, uh, there is a larger uh, uh, larger offer of the of the vessels which uh, which definitely affects the rates not to the positive uh, uh, direction if you look from ship owner point of view and it also uh, definitely affects the second-hand uh, prices of, of ships and uh, as, as Santa explained uh, last year uh, prices of second-hand ships which are the main assets also of Latvian shipping company has dropped uh, uh, dramatically and that's why also we changed our asset valuation methodology. Just for, for comparison, uh, 
to understand that uh, Latvian shipping company is not the only listed company which operates in uh, tanker market. There are several listed companies within uh, in different different uh, stock exchanges. Here we have given examples from two exchanges, but there are also uh, companies listed in in Europe. And you can see that uh, the share performance wasn't so good uh, last year. So what do what what we expect um, for this year and uh, maybe for for some also for 2018? Uh, there will be no dramatic changes this year. Uh, so we expect that the market will be at the same level as it is right now. But uh, we see some um, positive signals in uh, midterm for 2018 and uh, beyond. So as if we look at the order books at shipyards, there are not so many uh, orders starting from 2018 so it uh, gives some hopes that uh, ships will uh, increase rate of 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 uh, or ships will will slow second thing is uh, there are new uh, requirements regarding uh, prevention of uh, pollution and uh, to to introduce these requirements to the ships uh, costs uh, reasonable money and uh, we expect that uh, within the five years when there is a final date when when these changes should be implemented uh, some vessel owners will decide to scrap they vessels instead of uh, modernizing them. Uh, what we also see is that uh, a lot of shipyards are closing because of weak demand and if we compare uh, today with uh, boom 15 years ago so it's approximately 50 percent of shipyards are closed. It's also partly because of uh, financing uh, as, as, as banks have been very reluctant to finance uh, shipping projects and also governments in uh, different jurisdictions uh, no longer su subsidize or, or indirectly support uh, shipyards. And uh, yeah, you can see that uh, we found that if we compare uh, 2000 15 with 2016 there's a very significant drop in uh, financing cap capability it's uh, down 50 percent and uh, we also see that uh, speculative institutional investors are no longer uh, finding shipping markets so attractive so uh, it also could be positive uh, for ship owners and yeah if if these positive signals uh, will become reality then uh, from ship owner point of view uh, 2018 and beyond could could uh, could be uh, better times for ship owners And a uh, few words about um, our non-core segment. It's uh, real estate, which Latvian shipping uh, got back uh, in settlement a couple of years ago. And as we have uh, explained many times, uh, it's not our core business. Uh, we want to dispose this, this uh, assets and and uh, 
we are actively working to do it. Uh, we managed to sold one asset uh, last year, it was the creation center Leistiesumi, but for uh, bigger properties um, market was weak last year. But as we see uh, this year, it's better, it's becoming more active and uh, with some of the properties we are very close for signing uh, some deals. So we hope that uh, we'll manage to dispose these assets uh, this year. Yeah, and that's, that's it in brief uh, about uh, last year and what we expect this year. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Now we will proceed with the questions. A reminder to those who haven't yet submitted their questions, you can do it in the questions section in the settings panel zone. And the first question is, is the fleet value going to be decreased again, meaning significantly? I will answer that question. Um, as I explained earlier, uh, from this, starting from 2016, the LC Group's fleet value will be presented at the value as it is based on the valuation. So it will reflect market values accordingly. That means if the, we are going to, as we explained also in annual report for 2016, uh, the group has changed the accounting policy and the uh, Last further evaluations are planned to be for, performed at uh, at least twice a year, unless we do not see any uh, any significant um, reasons in the market. And also, the users of the information and the investors will see any reflections in the market. Will see in our balance sheet. So, if the market values of the fleet will increase, we will recognize the revaluation uh, revenues. And accordingly, if uh, significant changes will be uh, downwards, also it will ref be, it will be reflected in the profit and loss statement of the LSC group. Uh, thank you. Uh, the next question: uh, Why, is in the summary table, published price to earning ratio is not uh, together with the audited report calculated? Uh, I will try to answer this question. Uh, according to requirements of financial instruments market law, I guess I'm referring to the right. <laughs> Legislative Act. Uh, we have published uh, this year for the first time um, definitions and explanations of all the financial indicators we use. It's in the uh, notes on the last last page. I think it's the last note. Yeah. And uh, well, the simple answer is that uh, since uh, we there is no profit but there is a loss, we are not calculating this ratio because then it was, uh, it, it would be negative. That's the, that's the answer. Thank you. Uh, currently the last question, how big or small the Latvian shipping company is compared to the other listed shipping companies mentioned in the presentation? Are these your main competitors? Uh, well, um, some of them are our competitors, some are even our clients. Uh, it, uh, you see, uh, companies are very different. For example, Scorpio Tank has, uh, which time to time charter in our vessels, they have their own fleet and they also uh, charter in um, vessels from third parties. Uh, but in general, yeah, we, 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 see, we think that uh, they are working in the similar segment as Latvian shipping companies working and uh, they are 
uh, our competitors. Thank you. Uh, currently, all questions have been answered. Recording of the webinar will be available in the Nasdaq Baltic YouTube channel and in company's announcements. Uh, Dirk Tansante, thank you for the presentation and answers given. Participants, thank you for joining.